Hello, precious people of God. Trust you are doing well by the grace of God. We thank God for yet another day to spend time with Him, another day to commune with Him. I want us to take a short exercise, and that is, I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news, and that YouTube will also recommend this channel, this video to others, and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38, verses 12. It says, Has thou commanded the morning since thy days, and then caused the day spring to know its place? Now, this tells us of the great opportunities, of the great blessings we enjoy as children of God when we speak into our day. And so, it is what we are about to do. Open your heart, be alert, prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. Also, if you are new here, hit on that subscribe button for us and then on that notification bell. Keep sharing this message abroad, keep sharing on Facebook, keep sharing on YouTube to invite others to join us as we bless the world. You are a blessing. Thank you. Why? Stop. This is strange. I said it yesterday and I want to repeat it here. Some travails are because your time has come. It's not because you are out of alignment with God's system. Jesus is teaching a woman comes to a point in her life where she's in travail. The travail is not because she hated God. The travail is because her time has come many immature believers will say ah the travel is a sign that she's missing out on god somewhere the bible says because her hour is come do you know there are things that happen to people's lives simply because seasons have come not because you are out of sync with god seasons have come follow me but as soon as she's delivered of the child the reason for her travail not a child the child the very object for which the sorrow came the bible says she remembered no more the anguish for joy that a man is born into the world but until then there is a contention please listen to me many pastors have tried to preach what i'm telling you away to tell believers nothing like that happens i i I love the body of Christ but brothers and sisters I tell you this by the authority of the grace of Christ given to me I know how men become anointed don't sit down and allow people just fool you into thinking one day an extreme dimension of the anointing will come you are really joking there is a system and the caption of that system is called the travail I will tell you why these seasons come they must come you never pray them away you only pray for grace to pass through them the praying and saying they should not come is saying i do not want to enter that realm i don't care who you are i don't care how you love god jesus went through a season where he said father if it be thy will if it's possible let's renegotiate how this thing will happen but he quickly remembered and said nevertheless not my will but your will be done Abraham waited 25 solid years embarrassingly painful his servants had children and he did not have any do you know what it means to respect a man who does not have results while you the subordinate has it that's what Abraham went through he didn't just go through barrenness he went through the shame and the pain yet he waited It's in the system of God and is how he builds men and brings them into authentic power. The generals of faith walked that way. Our generation is running away from it. And we keep bragging and prophesying in arrogance. We are going to do more than Smith Wiggles what You go and read their history and you will see a track record. There is not one of them I know that escaped this. Not one. Not one of them. There is a season of travail because your hour Come. 
how many people want to start ministry without going through this and they crash land and make a fool out of themselves there is what qualifies you to host God there is what qualifies you to be a dispenser of the possibilities of God to nations one of it is this the mystery of the travail seasons that stretch your spiritual life from border to border seasons that stretch every part of your conviction mm. someone is getting blessed fill me up till I overflow I want to run I want to run one more time fill me up fill me up Shabarato Kasala Balarala. Let me tell you the benefit of the dealings of God. The first advantage of the dealings of God is that the dealings of God with a man produces alignment, it produces yieldedness. And it produces a track record in the spirit never forget this the dealings of God the spirit of man cannot align to God by default that destiny must come under a system that will compel alignment a system in ancient times they had a way they made the anointing oil right the olive oil they would take the olive plants and put them on something that looks like a threshing floor and put a heavy object upon it and someone will hold it and begin to turn it clockwise and the pressure mounted on that olive begins to squeeze out the oil the oil will drip out together with particles impurities but the man for the joy of the oil will not even mind the cry let me tell you God loves you too much to let your tears deceive him don't think he plans to end that season you must drink that cup in full I know what I'm saying does not look pleasant I show you the path to glory there is a relationship between death and glory there is a relationship between death and glory you will never be able to access glory without death verily verily I say unto you except a corn of wheat falls to the ground and dies no you don't just speak to nations and doors open i'm in christ you are joking you are really joking that ignorance is a sign that there's something you have not even seen because scripture is prophetic you need the holy ghost holy men were moved by the spirit so only the holy spirit can interpret what he wrote there are three reasons why we go through seasons of travail let me give it to us quickly. Number one. Sabra kata kata. Ah. The seasons of travail in a man's life. Listen. They, they, are, they create experiences that give you a personal revelation of who God is. The first advantage of seasons of travail is a personal revelation of who God is personal revelation there's too much theoretical knowledge about God in the body of Christ so many people they know the God that this person said people come to sing special numbers are you clapping for my Jesus is that what you give my God a foreign and a strange incense rising you must go through seasons the first advantage of the seasons of travail is they break out every sense of falsehood and theory and help you know who God is for yourself no longer the God of Joshua Selman you encounter him every name that God was named was an experience a season introduced that dimension of him what is the name you have given God based on your experience if you were asked to never call God by any name in the Bible has your experience given him a name that you can relate with you call him the name of another man's experience show me a name like 
a Jimmy can have a secret name for hope. Hope can have a secret name for a Jimmy. Aaron can have a secret name for his wife. I want you to show me a name that your experience with God has brought that only you can call. Someone else does not understand but two of you know. I'll show you why many people do not have convictions in the body of Christ. They know the God of another person. They do not know him for themselves. God's ultimate desire is not only that men will introduce him to you but that they serve as ushers a time must come you must have a track record and say i know him i know whom i have believed i know hmm. job 42 from verse 5 to 8 job was rich he talked about god he was a god-fearing man he gave sacrifices but a time came in the life of job he could not explain the predicaments in his life everything went haywire his entire life crashed and in the end this is what job said read it please one to read i have heard of thee by the hearing of the ear but now my eyes have seen you i heard joshua selman when he was talking about you i heard him say you can heal the sick i said amen but now that they told me i am ss i need to know the healer now now that they told me that i i am barren i tried everything i went to every man of god they did their best lord i locked the door me and you show me something about your glory church history is full of men who had encounters when they closed the door at everything and say lord show me something i'm tired of hearing the god of someone else and an explanation i cannot relate with show me the song that has come out of your experience with god worshipers you have been singing Kotka's song. You've been singing Thai Tribet's song. Show me a song that came out of your tears. You thought you will not make the next day. And he gave you a song. Every time you are in a challenge, that song comes. It may not minister to others, but it's your song. It's not a song for congregation. It's a song for your secret place. A song that reminds you of who God is. Let me tell you. You know why people, certain people in the body of Christ become unshakable and immovable? It's not because they are blind. It's not because they are not human. They have an experience with God that is higher than every other thing. I have heard of thee by the hearing of the ear. But now I have had an encounter with you. Job summoned God in chapter 38 and said, God, you need to come and reveal yourself to me. And when God showed up, God said, Job, I've been hearing you talk since chapter 1. I've just been keeping quiet. You've been making a lot of noise like you know me. Now let me talk to you. Where were you when I founded the earth? When I laid the foundations? When the morning stars sang? And Job said, my God, I was never taught that there is such a thing. He said, declare if you have understanding. There are healing evangelists who stepped into the level of creative miracles when they sat down and prayed. Kenneth E. Hagin, he was the guinea pig to his healing ministry. Dying of a deformity and nobody could heal him. I told you about my story. I've had fungal infection that ate my head. They said hair will not grow on my head again. I know what oppression looks like. When I'm laying hands on people, that memory sponsors the release of the anointing. There is something that sponsors compassion. It's not just because I'm kind-hearted. No. When you stand and you see someone's legs eaten by worms and is smelling, you are attempting to go, but you remember an experience. Ha! Fill me up. Till I overflow. I want to run I want to run Fill me up Listen Let me relate it to students Have you seen have you seen a final year student 
advising a new student who is just entering he will tell you sorry sir they gave me a course i'm trying to do change of department and the boy cannot sleep and the final year student is laughing because to that guy is a mount he, he's having a mountain can they change my course uh, can they do this sorry sir how do they do it in abu and you laugh and say my brother there's more to come home. you better relax you have not seen the guy in the department you are going to and then she enters the office of the man and for the first time in her life a man would blast and insult her he said you are stupid if you think you're a prostitute i'm not for you go out and she leaves never had she been insulted like that then you find out others who live in that realm every day they insulted them till they submitted their project it's called growth and the child grew no matter how you sympathize with that boy leave him sometimes don't pity people too much to cover seasons that will afford them opportunity to grow there, there is sometimes you can go through so much pain you want to over pamper people and in doing it you don't give them the opportunity to know god leave them alone every day you are giving him two two hundred naira one day tell him look i've done my best for you go and find out and he would think we'll call him later you say abba i know sam sam will call me you can't allow me to die like this i saw him cooking yam and then you, the holy spirit will tell you don't call him by nine o'clock he will start browsing the secret of prosperity enter now something is happening to him don't stop it pressure leads people to the anointing When a man starts a ministry, he will criticize every man of God. What is there with crowd? Wait and see. It's just because we need a venue. When he has a venue and for two years, he will first deny. Then later he will look at it and say, well, there may be something. After three years, he will be the first to sit down in the pastor's conference. When they say, I prophesy open door, he will be on his knees before the prophecy comes. Pressure brought him to an encounter. There are people who are too stubborn. Pharaoh was like that. Pharaoh did not have an experience with God. He only knew the God of the Hebrews. One day God said, I will reveal to you who I am. Moses, let me use you as a tool. Go and show this man. And he said, ah, is he just parting the Red Sea? They left him face to face. When he killed his child, he said, I did it. Me, God, let your witches bring him back to life. And all the gods of Egypt could not do it. And he said, the God of Moses, he is listen brothers and sisters let me tell you something you need an experience with god that will give you the audacity to move through life we chicken out too much and we look at life strange as if it's because you have not gone through i want you wherever you threw your experiences go and gather them this night create a basket in the spirit call it my testimony and call it my ladder to the place of the anointing store it back i know a and b happened to you that was not favorable but the bible says for we know those who have not gone through it do not know but us we know that all things all things all things all things there are things i've gone through in my life that make me look at mountains like mold hills i tell you I don't even pray about them what for it's a waste of time i already have walked with god enough to know that there is a way out i don't have to disturb him some prayers are a symbol of faith and faithlessness and ignorance it's because you do not understand the systems of god a track record that track record produces strength and stamina proverbs 24 verse 10 if you fall in the day of battle it says your strength is small i see a lot of believers who do not have stamina you you see how malleable they are everything bends them under pressure to explain everything to everybody no it's not like that it's not like i'm a bad person who cares there is a system you go with god that you are governed by posterity conscience and the fear of god any other person can go places I look at the body of Christ and there's too much pressure to defend our ego. Let, let them not say it's me that carried this thing. You know. See, everybody watch. I'm, uh -uh. Let them think what they want to think. You have gone through a lot with God to know that honor is a mantle. 
it's not just what you fight for if it's not on your life no matter how innocent you are you will not be honorable do you have that track record please i'm telling you this so that when you go back home you will kneel down and thank god for what made you cry yesterday something that brought tears out of your eyes has now opened you up to enough room to know god listen listen i wish what i were saying were a lie i would have just told you sorry but what i'm saying is so true is the foundation for authentic power are we together every time they talk of blessing you you think of your uncle you think you have faith you really don't have faith then one day your uncle leaves you and says from today uh you are a man how old did you say you are you say i'm 23 i'm, I'm still a child he says no you're a man from today you fend for yourself for one month you will see that there's no result meaning somebody's result was covering you corporate success can be dangerous because you can hide under it thinking you are making it worship team is doing well are you doing well you many people hide under corporate success we are anointed i know we are men of god i know life will separate you and demand from you you have to prove that you are intrinsically valuable and the key is to pass through these seasons before i continue i want you to pray one minute from your heart and say lord the let the seasons come i only ask for grace i'm no longer afraid i've been running away from it and fast forwarding my breakthrough but lord i summon courage uh -uh. if it is hunger let me go through it till i catch the key for wealth i'm tired of begging up and down lord let these seasons bring me to the anointing i know i know oh the bible says after two days he will revive us and on the third day he will raise us up are you praying koinonia lord let them come they may be painful but i open up my spirit and i receive the voice of god through those experiences they may be embarrassing but lord i need an encounter i need to know you for myself Are you praying? I have heard of thee by the hearing of the ear, but now I know that challenges do not kill. I had men say it, but I know now. Hallelujah. Listen. This is what makes your sermons powerful because you are speaking from a depth of conviction. When you preach from pain, you don't preach and you are looking whether you are right or wrong. Ah, I hope this thing I'm saying, that's theory. You went to do browsing, copy and paste. But when you are preaching your life and your pain, blood is dripping from your life that testifies that you know what you are saying. You are not advising people. You are telling them the way out. Whether they believe or not is their cup of tea. Men of conviction are men who have pain. They have scars that are... Let me tell you. A scarless man is an anoint... Is, is, is a man who is barren of the anointing. Your scar is where the anointing is rubbed on. It's not rubbed where there is no scar. The place of scar is the point of application. The balm in Gilead is not applied to a place where there is no wound. That anointing. When arm robbers hit someone and the Samaritan man came, he rubbed oil on the places of the wounds. Everywhere that he did not have wound, there was no need for anointing. Don't rub your pain. There is glory coming out there. Don't rub your financial struggles. There is an unction coming up there. Don't rob your barrenness. Let me tell you, let all the naysayers preach. You will find them after Koinonia. They will still tell you I'm talking nonsense to you. You will still hear them, but you continue. 
you are going through it for them the day they will need your miracle by then you will be anointed enough to help them listen there were people who said things about me many years they never saw my face they do not even know me many years later they would come to meet me hearing about joshua selman they never knew never knew and now they saw me and compassionately like joseph ministering to his brother i would minister to them while i was going through what would give me the anointing to help them the devil was using them to criticize and talk but god said keep moving just set your face like a flint sometimes silence is the way to speak silence is the only way to speak in certain seasons I'm speaking to you from the depth of my heart tonight you catch the key I'm sharing with you you catch an unction that will change your life you are two people conscious it has stopped you from entering your what will they say there is a way you go through something I say let them say the trouser is torn no problem you, you have gone to this this trying to live your life for people you just tell yourself it's over i'm done with it i i i know my redeemer lives if it does not bless me let me die but doing it just for my reputation is over i'm tired of trying to just be nice for people an experience so you want to worship god and you're watching that guy i like is looking at me maybe my clothes will roll maybe they will see my inner wears there is a way you go through fire and not believe you will come out before they raise the song you will lie down as if you are sleeping and start rolling on the ground roll like a mad person and people will say ah, ah david why are you rolling this way and he said i'm rolling to the god i'm dancing to the god who took the kingdom i never knew i would be a king god took me now you just inherited joy i'll be your son's daughter you don't know what happened between me and your father god took an anointing from your father and brought it to me fill me up till i overflow i wanna run i wanna run over fill me up everyone here you need a personal experience with God listen I speak especially for the men you cannot live a lifetime of conviction without encounters you will bend to your convictions left right and center because the devil will throw everything at you you must have a story in your life that you can tell your children and say in 1971 I thought I would be eaten by this disease but I'm standing strong Satan where were you in 1971 if I didn't die then I would not die now we have boastful confessions in the body of Christ without an experience that sponsors our conviction oh if my ministry does not grow in one year let it be that i'm not called of god and you are there ranting and speaking nonsense the key is not english the key is not rema the key is a track record when blood drips from you then the oil comes through it the anointing is for the place of pain i'm speaking to someone here anointing is for the place of pain no scars no anointing no scars no grace no scars no testimony no scars no unction that's how it works you can preach another message to yourself but I tell you if it is power you look for I show you the way it comes a track record the cave of Adulam seasons of pain seasons of travail as soon as Zion travails as soon as she begins the contractions that comes to a woman is not a sign that she's a stupid woman 
it will make her uncomfortable she will get up and be walking around when she goes to the hospital they will make her do exercise she will do stupid things her husband will be there she will act as if she's out of her sense a baby is coming when that baby comes so come visitors everywhere for the sake of the baby you are gathered here today because somebody did not allow this training to pass you are gathered here today because there is blood dripping from someone's altar we who will gather your own meeting because of the price you are paying you think it will happen something for nothing is witchcraft you are joking there is a track record with all the greed in you with all the pride and the self-centeredness you want the anointing no sir you will pass through that furnace i guarantee you i guarantee you while you are crying god will only supply grace he will not take you out but if you can walk and finally step out at the other end you will be a vessel unto honor it is at that point you will think a thing and God will do it. You have not prayed. You are thinking, God, I think I need, I need 50,000. Someone says, God said I should give you. It's a realm. You don't claim it. You qualify for it. There are things I've, I'm seeing in my life now. I wanted them many years, but I did not know that the track record had not created room for them. God kept telling me forget about these things just keep walking with me today I wonder I didn't even know when they came the track record. oh Lord make me a kingdom financier and then God tells you to sew all your clothes and everything and then people pity you you feel like an idiot you work so hard and God tells you to give it away and God said, you say, but God, why are you not doing it for someone else? I thought you said you wanted the wealth mantle. You think it's just about wearing designers? You are joking. There is a furnace of affliction. You make others rich and remain poor. A season comes, God will say, the season is full. Your cup is full and your heavens are open. And men say, where is this coming from? It's a mystery. See, these are the men you talk about them you bring curses on yourself believe me when i tell you this thing there are men you speak about them literally god will, they don't curse you their covenant the blood that has come out from their life is still on an altar it, it has a throne in heaven this is what produces miracles these things you are seeing this is not by faith it's a covenant god vows to back you as far as this is concerned so you can go to the nations you don't need to ask them whether they believe God in the church you just need to go you carry your altar you carry your covenant and then you bless the world do you have an encounter with God do you know him not Jesus of Nazareth do you know him do you know him I cried for a revelation of him not just a vision of Jesus an experience so when I say God is a good God something in me should be able to explain it when I say God is a deliverer I should be able to say how many are they that rise up against me many are they which say where is his help I should be able to say but thou O Lord art a shield for me you're my glory my glory not just koinonia's glory my glory i know you can lift my head i went through hell men said bury him but you brought me out that was david for you david was a man who knew god you see why he knew god he went through more pains than any king he went through more disappointment to an extent that god said you will not build me a temple he would have been offended he said god i know you too much I know you too much to complain. I will gather the money for my son. I'm speaking to you. Too many believers who don't know God. We brag around thinking because we have little anointings here and there. Brother, you need a track record. That blood you are running away from must come out. 
no it must come out if it came out of the son of god it must come out of his body the sufferings of christ and the glory that follows i show you a virgin path that many people may never follow they don't like it they like the anointing they like the charismatism they like the influence but they do not like the track record A man can get to a level where if he prophesies to you and it's a mistake God will make that mistake come to pass because there is a covenant he has tied his integrity to so they can just look at you and say be blessed you have entered the creative dimension of your work with God where you don't just reveal things you create them it's a realm I'm speaking to you from the depth of my heart not many men of God will teach you this thing I'm telling you because many people consider it to be the hallmark of their ministry it's like a man coming to tell you bedroom secrets between you and the wife no sensible married man will just carry anybody outside and come and tell you bedroom secrets what I'm telling you now is the mystery responsible for any great man most men of God I understand why they create a system and never share it I don't think it's pride they value the blood that drips from them it takes love for you to hear what I'm teaching you and you must love God to appreciate it just like there are some of you looking and say wow this is very interesting look if I were you I would stop rushing my life I really will stay with God see if you seek him you will find him we are not seeking him we are seeking things around him. When fasting is still a problem, you are seeking him, you are joking. God will say, separate yourself two days, I want to talk with you. Ah, oh God, I beg, please, you are there, I bind that spirit. And I'm not talking of some hilarious things. After tonight's meeting, you say, I'm going 60 days. All that is religion. Because it's not directed. You will only starve yourself for nothing. number two this will be probably one of the greatest messages you would have heard in this 2016 if you work with what I'm teaching you you will command results in a way that will scare you believe me remember I gave us a scripture that is a verse of comfort and the child grieved. So you don't have to sit down and think some people were born like that. Nobody was born like that. And Jesus grew. John grew so you can grow. Benny Hinn grew. Kenneth Copeland grew. You must grow. You will not just become, you will grow. Number two. The second advantage of seasons of travail in our lives, the second advantage is that it imparts upon your life understanding, understanding, a comprehension of the secrets of God. Listen, there are secrets in God that only when you are the lowest point of your life you will see them. There are things God has shared with me today. I will no, I, well, let me not say no mortal man. There is nobody that may ever get to hear it. You will not even believe it. There are secrets that until you get to a level with God, if it does not show, even you yourself will not believe it. Listen, we take truths from faith to faith. There are mysteries that surround this kingdom that control results and power. When you are there with God, it affords him the opportunity to show you certain deep things that when you were high there, you would not have believed. But now that you are there, you will hear. Understanding the comprehension of the secrets of God. The Bible says the secret things belong to the Lord right 
the secrets of the Lord are with them that fear him and he will reveal his covenant look at me <laughs> read this Bible from Genesis to Revelation I promise you I promise you there are things you will never see pain is a key in the spirit there are doors that only pain can open believe me brothers and sisters believe me on this there are times you go through seasons in your life when you go through those seasons in your life then certain scriptures open up the Lord is my shield and my salvation who shall I be afraid of the Lord is the strength of my life of whom and it now makes sense ah I now see better is one day in your house than a thousand elsewhere I rather be a doorkeeper all of a sudden it will be as if you have written books but now you are seeing things there are things I've seen this year that I literally had to stop and I started crying I said my God there are things I said by the spirit in koinonia teachings that not even me had come into the fullness of the comprehension of it I have looked at them ah, Psalm 54 verse 7 for he had delivered me out of all trouble and my eye had seen his desire on my enemies do you have an experience that can explain that a thousand shall fall by your side and ten thousand by your right side none shall harm you only will you stand and see have you seen that That's why the name of Jesus doesn't make any, any impact for many people. We shout Jesus like a champ. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the glorious name of Jesus. It's not in English. That name reacts to something. See, let me tell you. There are men that are deeply respected in the realm of the spirit satan knows what makes him respect men he's not english when you see a man walking in this realm of the spirit full of scars blood dripping down as a symbol of his sacrifice to communicate his desire to let the multifaceted dimensions of god be hosted in him they are the kinds that he reproved kings for their sake saying touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm they are the kinds that are unkillable. They will match a charm and pass. Even the charm knows it will not work. It's not try. Maybe I'm, I'm trying to make the charm work. No, no. It's a realm. That is the realm where they can look and say, no sickness can touch me. You know, we mock ourselves in the body of Christ. Oh, I, I mean, I, I can't be sick. And we're just joking. Do you know at what level in the spirit that word becomes activated in your life? every prophecy have, has levels just like in our environment there, there are certain conditions for certain things to happen don't just speak because you saw it in the Bible are we together and so there are so many men of God today they carry their hands lay it on sick people and say I'm anointed and after five years they carry the diseases on the people not by airborne disease the mystery of transference because they do not know that you must truly sustain a higher potential the bible says lay hands suddenly on no man lest thou be a partaker just by laying hands you can partake listen in your walk with god there are secrets god will show you they are not for public consumption they are not doctrines they are secrets he reveals to you to guide the delivery of the grace he has put upon you it will mislead people when these secrets become public not necessarily because they are demonic but it is a unique dealing of God to you 
William Branham had a secret with God where his angel will appear when he saw that angel in a healing meeting it was a sign to him that the prophetic mantle was activated then he would begin to heal and prophesy now if you sit down and walk like that you will get into witchcraft something else will appear to you are we together now because that was a unique dealing a portion for Kenneth E. Hagin it is in the secret place as you walk with God you begin to learn certain anointings he will train you with certain sensations just for you to know what kind of anointing is in the building now you can't write a book on it you will bring people into error he will show you when the healing anointing is there he will use your body parts as keys to symbolize to you you will your your organs of interaction with the spirit will be heightened they have personalized dealings with the spirit so when you come for a meeting you stand near someone you can know that there is witchcraft at work not just because you saw a spirit a code was given to you in the secret place and God says whenever you have this sensation is the presence of a demon spirit for someone else that sensation can mean breakthrough is coming it's like jam questions you see how they mix them your question one is someone's question ten that's how it is in the spirit he may you may feel heat in your hand and say it's healing anointing no it is your secret place that gives you your own question paper and god tells you for you this experience means breakthrough is coming oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. I minister to people sometimes you see me laying hands on people and sometimes I can just stand there are there are things your body becomes a superconductor of his glory you can feel the impulses of God's desire he can move in any way he wants with you but we never remain in the secret place until we get that depth of understanding I don't just mean understanding of quoting scriptures the secret meaning to truths in scripture you can stay with God and the moment you see someone coming you know that this man will destroy me it's, you didn't have a vision there is a dealing with God there is an impulse you know that this car is going to have accident I will come out it's not just out of fear hi why have I been feeling like a cow no 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 no, no. I'm not talking about that I'm talking about a sensation you get up and you can know my elder sister is in trouble you were trained in the secret place i show you mysteries physically you just see men doing things but i wish your eyes would be open in the spirit they are like robots wires from eternity connected to different parts of them that communicate several impulses of the spirit that's how sometimes i can know the exact point where the holy ghost will touch someone I can stop my preaching and as I'm opening my mouth the anointing is touching the person it's a training it's not guessing you try doing it it's not guessing that level of precision comes in the secret when he visits you he tells you this is a key to this One of the things you will get still on point two is he will now reveal to you the unique role you have to play in his end time agenda. No, 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 no. You have to get to that point where God now tells you, look, David, damn, come. I have passed you through seasons. And then he tells you, David, damn, this was what it was all about. You're going to take the worship the healing power of God through worship to the nations that is your mandate downloaded it's not just the issue of talent alone it's the issue of the seasons in your life bringing you to a place where he now gives you the blueprint and he says David 
you will be a mistral you will speak my purposes to nations and while he's downloading it you are dear tiny you but an experience has qualified you for a mantle something comes on your life you may not even realize when it came all of a sudden you will find out that you go for a meeting and all of a sudden you are worshiping and the prophetic starts manifesting dramatic results and healings all of a sudden someone calls you and says sorry we're in uk we just listened to your album we are ready to pay for everything you have been fasting for open door you even tried to join a site that will help to facilitate your travel the door was not open in the spirit now it has been opened the nations will call you i want to show you how men rise in the spirit when you rush physically whereas the door is closed in the spirit you will frustrate yourself and go around and come back to the same point your unique room as you are seated here looking at me can you stand up right now and say apostle I know what my role is in God's end time agenda I'm an intercessor my experiences with God has revealed this to me that he has called me to through the ministry of intercession birth the purposes of God in the lives of men and nations have you found it I was in Kano preaching at a PFN um, conference a few months ago hey, Jimmy, I met a woman for the first time in my life who finishes her Bible every month she said sometimes in 11 days she finishes by word of knowledge I called her out even me I don't finish my Bible like that read your Bible and finish in a month you know how hard it is to read these things that's to tell you it's not an ordinary book you have finished books more for luminous than this but what is it about this that you cannot just finish it's not a story book when the Spirit of God comes upon it there is a lot here there is a reaction to your spirit that will force you to not rush it there is a level of building you must have with God to be able to read your Bible and finish it this woman finishes her Bible every month without fail it's something I've not done I don't know if there's any man I, I may be wrong but I don't know who finishes your Bible every month cover to cover then start again but here is a quiet woman it's a track record with God you will be surprised something happened to her life maybe her child died maybe she lost her job and she said Lord since nothing is working in my life let me pick my Bible all of a sudden she stumbled across the mantle of her destiny and now this woman is an intercessor when I saw her I was almost saying Ma, I can pay your house rent if need be to just include me to be part of your prayer point i have met a few women a few women maybe i think there, there should be one here one mama they believe that part of their life's assignment is to pray for me constantly man that is the greatest gift you can give me you can buy me a car you can buy me a house those things are mundane but to have men and women when i'm when i'm i'm just moving around traveling by air whatever i'm sleeping somebody's awake constantly touching heavens for me it's a mystery but there are men like that there are others who are financial apostles they are the ones who will fund god's end time agenda there are ladies here your prophetic destiny is tied to your marriage that's why god is so strict with you other women can marry anybody but for you you are like esther so because of that there are certain things that must happen in your life god will not allow certain things to happen you will be saying god but why me he says because esther must marry a hazardous for israel to be free and so it will not just be anyhow oh, oh, oh.
about your life can be connected to prophecy but these seasons will reveal them to you every man that tries to ask you out he just leaves it may not all be demonic it's because you have been separated there is a mantle on you you have been separated you may not know but i say it again esther must marry a hazardous so that israel will be free it's not about marriage and children the bible does not discuss the children of ahasuerus and esther it's not necessary haman is a beast that wants to destroy the the israel of god and it will take an esther so god will separate you other people may be moving god to say for you stay here oh god where are you going with me the secret place will reveal it so that you stop judging everything as delay oh god i'm going through delay in my life all my colleagues are married do you not see what is upon you do you not see that there is a mantle and that's what controls the things that happen around your life while you are seated i want you to pray in one minute and say lord what is my role in your end time agenda make it clear please pray Please pray. Shabatakata. Lande Kretos Kalaba. Why do you visit me in the night with songs of worship? Where are you going with this melody so called? Is it just to watch an album? Or is there more? Where am I going with these songs of worship? What is the meaning of all these visions? You wake me up in the night. I can't sleep sound. You are showing me things. To what end, oh God? Where are you driving my destiny to? Why am I so passionate about finances? Is it just to prosper? Or is there more? Is there a mantle upon my life that must release a resource for God's end time agenda? I thought it was all about business. I thought it was all about wealth. But could there be that there is a prophetic anointing upon it? Show me my role. Why have you given me influence? Why do I meet great men everywhere I go to? Why do men of influence want to talk to me? Is there an anointing upon my life? Is there mantle that will be used in this end time why have you given me unusual influence why have you given me access why am i so compassionate could there be a prophetic explanation The third advantage for rounding up. When all is said and done, you get to the place of the anointing. That was what it was all about. Listen to me. The pain is a journey. The pain is not an end. The pain is a door leading you somewhere. Finally, you get to that place where all is prepared your body has been prepared now to carry grace your marriage has been prepared to fulfill god's agenda you get to a point where god tells you all the relocation was all about the anointing all the activity was all about the anointing you've been a graduate for 15 years no job it was all about the anointing all about the anointing I seek an agenda that is bigger than your needs. Thank you for aligning yourself. It was painful. But now that you have gotten here, then you will encounter grace. The ancient mystery that came upon ordinary men and turned them into signs and wonders. That is not just an ordinary impartation of falling down and standing up. 
your spirit is now programmed to begin to host possibilities possibilities that is the realm where your voice becomes like the voice of God you speak and it rattles the foundations of men's destiny it's not about oratory there is an authorization that comes upon your life on the strength of this sacrifice listen to me there are two dimensions of receiving impartation the first is a direct impartation from God because there are certain anointings that are new and your secret place will be the first to introduce that possibility of God so there is no physical vessel carrying it to release it to the earth you will be the first to enter a covenant with God that will reveal that possibility listen please look at me not every mantle that should be on earth is already on earth not every mantle that should be on earth was recorded here in the Bible there are mantles that are still yet to come there are graces that are still yet to come the gift of the Spirit is not nine only nine were revealed there are many more there are many more expressions of the Spirit seeking for men let me tell you it is important you understand this there are many other possibilities of God the anointing is like rain it moves from Asia to Africa seeking for vessels that are worthy enough for its landing and it doesn't find any and it goes to the continent may Africa keep it because there are certain graces there are things God has been wanting to do on earth but the anointing moves like a plane not finding a place to land the same way demon spirits go around restless that's how the, the certain dimensions of God's mantle are restless they are looking for bodies bodies a body has thou prepared for me when you go through this season then it comes oh for when it comes upon you then you will begin to manifest things that you will never believe possibilities you will change things that's when you can look at someone's jump score and say what did you get he says 141 and you say i change it he goes to check and sees 276 no 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 at that level they are not clapping for a man of god you have represented a system that brings the possibilities of God to people. I'm showing you how to be a blessing. It's not just by giving people sewing machine. You must carry an anointing. God keeps telling me every time, Son, if you will give me more room, there is still so much I can do with you. You know, sometimes when he says these things, I just start weeping because I just sit and say, my God, so there is more. There is more. There are challenges that some of you may have that we have not yet accessed the level of grace to reveal Christ to you in that dimension. We can choose to camp around this mediocrity or still press and say there is more. When people act as if they have arrived, I am shocked. So a direct encounter. In Exodus chapter 4, Moses had a direct encounter. His mantle came directly from God. No one had done what he was about to do. And so God had to give him the impartation directly. But the second dimension is impartation through the ministry of men. We are not strange to this understanding. I've taught it here and there. And I've taught you that men are systems in the realm of the spirit. They are not just human beings. They represent systems. Let me reiterate what I said in one of the meetings. Watch this. I told you that spiritual growth is through relationship. Hear me. But kingdom advancement is through covenant. If you did not understand it that time, maybe you have grown enough to get it now. Let me repeat it. I said that our walk with God spiritual growth is based on relationship but the advancement of the kingdom God's end time agenda is based on covenant and the second law is that God reveals himself dimensionally he reveals portions of himself and commits portions of himself to people 
but the system with which he brings that about is that when God intends to reveal himself in a way he must find a man when he finds a man listen he enters a personal covenant not Old Testament not New Testament a personal covenant with that man and that covenant with that man becomes his authorization for revealing that dimension of him to that dispensation nobody in that dispensation will encounter that dimension of Christ ignoring what that individual represents you must pass through him or a tribe that is connected to him for you to enter that dimension so when you look at the healing ministry on earth today for instance you trace it down to different men of God it finally lands on Benihi he is the living system that represents God's healing power to the nations today and until Benihi goes to be with the Lord no matter how anointed you are you will still make reference to his covenant with God that represents that territorial dimension of healing are you getting the point now the word of faith you go down to people like David Ipiome you know Bishop Oyedeko and it lands finally on Kenneth Copeland he is the living system that represents the communication of God's ministry of faith on earth but there are much more there are other possibilities God wants to reveal he has not yet found a man who can align to reveal that possibility because the heavy persecution that will come on that man for being the first to introduce that dimension listen let me tell you no it's not something i say in the open. when you understand this mystery then you will know the reason why you must be prepared to carry the anointing the anointing will bring certain grave grave levels of hostility in your life that if you are not built by God you will die men who introduced all of the movements we know in the body of Christ some of them it was until they died many years after they had died other people who were the fruits of their mantle stumbled across their books and they said my God 50 years ago this man wrote this now he is dead do you know there are many things Kenneth E. Hagin wrote and many of the generals is now the church is understanding them we read them and even edited them but now we are seeing that ah this is it many years ago John G. Lake said you know the casting out of devils also produces manifestations they insulted him and they said manifestations are only impartations John Lake knew what he was seeing he was describing a dimension of the deliverance ministry that was not yet known but right now it is like the last 10 years that that ministry just started coming to Africa but they were men with the eyes of the eagle they had seen it do you know there are many things some of you here you go back to your notebooks and read messages you listened to in 2001 that's when you will scream and say do you mean I was under this anointing and I did not recognize it encounters see if you want to move more than having an anointing to becoming a spiritual system it's not a very attractive life your entire life is a lonely one the the course of life that everyone follows you may never have the privilege to enjoy it there are certain men on earth today who carry an anointing called a kingmaker anointing i never knew there was such an anointing until god taught me let me tell you the price for carrying a kingmaker anointing you will never enjoy what the anointing carries through you but you will make others have it there are men like that their churches will never be large yet they will produce the largest churches on earth their crusades may never have signs and wonders but they will transfer the deepest miracle working anointing it's a kind of anointing if you don't know it you will say they don't have the results you are looking for be careful there are dimensions it's a kind of grace Paul said so then death works in us Paul was never married in his lifetime but he taught married people how to live that's the kingmaker anointing 
it brings you into a realm that the person himself does not have the privilege to ever enjoy it like the woman who spoke to me a woman who probably had never held hundred thousand of her money but she said my son forever walk upon gold that's a kingmaker it will be many years in my life walking with God I will now realize that so this is what was released that mama never knew she carried it only God knows where she is on earth now maybe she's seated as we are talking right now she's trusting God to raise 200 naira for her but she has produced a wonder through the anointing in her life there are men you ignore they carry things they are not authorized to benefit from it but they will give it to you ah there are mysteries in this kingdom there are mysteries in this kingdom so a woman who never had a good home never had a good home but there is a mantle upon her when she blesses your marriage that pain is what authorized that anointing to walk in her life so you can see all her children haywire seven children they are all touts and you say this woman must be irresponsible but she may be the greatest prayer warrior you ever know there is a woman who lost her husband her marriage failed when she was 20 called anna the prophetess for 64 years she was in the temple interceding you would think what kind of prophetess are you that you could not solve your problem that was a kingmaker anointing when jesus was born he said my, my eyes have seen the salvation of israel now lord let me go to rest all i was waiting for i may not experience his ministry in my lifetime but my job was to bring him here we're going to pray brothers and sisters it's time for us to move to the next level spiritually the anointing is what we need to bring the love of jesus to nations how god anointed jesus jesus said the spirit of the sovereign lord is upon me doctors you need the anointing of the spirit if you treat patients with what you were taught alone you will watch many patients die in your hands you need more than injection and and, and stethoscope you need a grace businessmen if all you think you want to do is real estate and make money and do all of this you are going to be in trouble because there are forces you need the anointing you need the anointing to marry you need love to marry foolishly and anyhow but you need the anointing for your marriage to strike a chord for esther to marry a hazardous so that israel will be saved esther needed an anointing not just beauty there was a kind of ointment she rubbed on herself for one year before she became married you will need more than reading if your education is to bring the glory of god you can read to get 4.69 but you need more than that god will ask you to vow a vow and say for as long as i live i will use my certificate to bless you and you say yes you will answer two questions and still get an a because it was never about your effort you have a deal with god so the covenant from that sacrifice has kicked into play. a man who vowed to fail you and his life will go haywire in one week not because you are so prayerful he's the keeper of his covenant this was part of what i preached in the conference and the lord said i should bring it home and speak to us again brothers and sisters the time you carry the anointing that can solve men's problems truly you have earned the right to be a blessing stop sympathizing with people you have done it too much press 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 like the woman with the issue of blood let them say whatever they want to say but can you press through the crowd and carry something authentic So you thank God for not allowing you to start ministry yet. You would have just been like any other man. 
little signs and wonders 12 members today 20 tomorrow 5 next tomorrow then you now join the bandwagon of critics who are frustrated by they are not pressing listen stop trying to change things around you something on you is what will change everything around you stop trying to change things around you something on you something on you something on you favor will not come just because you know all the people favor will come because there is something on you that will call them are we together five minutes you are going to play worship for us I don't know whether you want to lie down whether you want to cry but for the next five minutes I'm leaving you and God alone I want you to flog it in a time of intense prayer and intercession if I see you choking and looking at me I'll come and hold your hands you are going to cry to God and say my life my for my destiny you are alone I'm going to be crying to God too so it's a moment of intercession five minutes give us worship play and everybody just cry to God
use me, use me, use me for your glory, use me, use me, use me, use me, greater things, greater dimensions, greater levels. surprised to see what he will make out of your mind. The anointing does not just come. There is a generation that is at the mercy of men and women, ladies, gentlemen. Our children are at the mercy of our alignment. Please, you must understand this. Every lady, every woman of God here, listen to me your children you are the ones who will carry them for nine months men don't carry children do you know what it means for a woman to carry a baby for nine months you can transfer everything required if you are anointed if you are anointed if you are anointed please all through this week let your prayer be use me use me it's a prayer we used to pray before but many people in the body of christ don't pray it again use me they just say i know that i'm used i was born for a reason arrogant rubbish talk use me a desperate cry from a vessel that wants to be used lord and god i know you can do without Can you pray that prayer in one minute before we round up? Use me. Use me. Please pray from your heart. Use me. For your glory, for your power, remain where you are if you're on the ground you can remain there i want to make a very serious altar call there are people here in this congregation there are people outside you know you have never truly given your hearts to jesus probably you were invited for the first time probably you are following online right now with your device and you know that you need Jesus as a matter of life and death there is a second category those who have never seen a reason to be serious with God 
anything that happens whatever those two categories of people i want to pray for you i feel a deep body in my heart especially for those who are coming out here now wherever you are whether you are outside don't match anybody on the ground there are still people praying but i want you to leave your seat and come out right now the lord is touching people strangely outside i see a lot of impartations outside but make your way and come out here right now make your way and come out here as you come and stand just start praying no cajoling nobody is is, is is wasting time cajoling you you know by yourself that you are saying no lord i take you seriously i take you seriously i take you seriously i take you seriously is god still speaking to people where are those outside that god is speaking to what is restraining you from rushing to his call again are you still embarrassed is this still a decision you are trying to make is this still a decision is this still a battle you are trying to win are you still trying to think about it it's not worth thinking about it's worth acting on still come i know there are still more people as you come out here just stand and pray talk to god please don't sit back there when god is saying come out sit back there there are destinies tied to the decision you're making you must be born again god is still bringing men out make your way and come make your way and come let tonight be a night of encounter if you don't plan to be serious with this prayer go back to your seat please we're not playing games you have to be serious here this is not some emotional thing to just come and entertain yourself jesus i need you jesus i need you I want to salute all of you who have come out some of you this is your first time making a quality decision you've been lying you've been pretending you are not serious you just made those decisions so they don't disturb you today will be your first official intentional decision for some of you you are rededicating yourself sincerely you're saying lord i need you i need you i'm not there's there's no pretending it i really need you it doesn't matter what category you belong before I lead you to pray, in one minute, talk to Jesus and say, I mean business with you. Go ahead. Everyone standing here. Lord, as I'm standing here, please discern it from my heart that I mean business with you. Oh, it's not like before. I know I came out for an altar call. I was just laughing while the altar call was going on. I didn't even know what I was doing, but now, no, I'm, I'm serious. I'm not ashamed. Let them see me. Yes. It is me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. There is nothing that a living man can do, say, or become that will stop Jesus from receiving such a person. Now, his goodness, his love, his passion for you will not allow him to see such a sincere desire and ignore. He says to everyone that will come to him, he will in no wise cast away. I'd like you to say it after me. Listen to what you are saying. Say it passionately some of you as you are saying it the lord will be saying tell your friends you made this decision tell them tell them as at yesterday i was not serious with god but this sunday night in koinonia i made a decision so in case you think it is me or before 
I'm a brand new person. I am by this decision warning you. I love you, but I don't think we can walk together again. Say after me, Lord Jesus, I love you with all my heart. This night, I stand before you completely open and I ask you to help me. Purge me. Cleanse me. I ask Jesus to be Lord of my life. I declare that from this night, I hand over my life, my days on earth, and my Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salman. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing jesus i'll see you again bye